Amen. 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 I want to be a Christian. Urgumu imi sa ere kuwa wa ke chose kuwa wa. Isu te gare te te. Mupiwe chizi kana warika. Ochipa aywa sa. Gana ine ishoti chana siga chigare tisa siye tisa siye mariwe duka gana ine. Parecido, 
avisa E o arigô Mas e daí O soró Ao farere que se dará coririco O soró Cude Aleluia Aleluia Amen. In times like this, you need a savior. In times like this, you need an anchor. Be very sure. entitled the evening time be blessed be vigilant and courageous the bride of Christ we're living in the evening time the world has got spiritual amnesia people are wandering in the dark Satan is, a, is at work he's trying by all means to deceive to pervert the very elected one but fear not, Jesus is the light in the evening time. Jesus is the anger of the gospel court in this evening time. You don't have to run, even if the devil tightens each and every situation you are in. Don't get fear, never fear. For Jesus, the anger, make, always make sure that you are safe and secure. We are living in the evening time. We are living in the zero hour. The rest is almost due, but the bride is going to run that final race. For the word has been revealed in front of you. For the bride has seen, has seen the manifestation of Jesus. So never fear, he's going to run that final race. It's evening time, the bridegroom is at the door. When morning comes, you enter and take his own. Prepare yourselves in this evening time. John is around the corner. And morning is about to come. Morning is approaching. Brothers and sisters, we're living in the evening time. Let's be watchful for what the devil is doing. It's only to pervert his bride. But let's always be vigilant and courageous. Thank you.
Amen. Tuna tena warini poe mekanaka. Amen. Sister Elizabeth. Watu ya kusuti ingira. Amen. Shalom saints. Tikare takari ndira taka gazirira kuya kwa haki kwa pedo. Amen. Wanga na ruko mbere wanenzi yoza kata uka. Amen. Ticha imbiru wa ni masquire. I have an anchor. Then last little so petsira ni edi matiwa sister.
with all the trouble around me how discouraged i could be yet in my heart there's a deep set of peace i have no fear of what will be my father promised he's holding me i have an anchor that's set first and true solid rock this morning. Amen. We have the Madziwa sisters singing for us. I go to the rock. Amen.
shelter, we definitely have to go to that rock. Amen. Shall we all stand to our feet this morning as we get ready for the word? There's a precious hiding place in Jesus' side. There is a precious hiding place in Jesus' side, in Jesus' side, there is a glare of heavenly grace. In Jesus' side, in Jesus' side, there is a shelter from.
Well, our next gathering will be here on Wednesday, no more time. God bless you. Uh, today we are a privileged lot. Having our meetings is our precious brother E.K. We'll be standing in the gap. Uh, as we invite him to take his place. We are the soul leader to lead us in, his, uh, in a song. May, may the Lord bless you as we enjoy the service. Amen. 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 Heavenly bed by Jesus, by Jesus, there's a shelter from all sin, from all doubt, and from all fear. We want to greet you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ this morning. We thank the Lord for gathering us once again. I believe like David of old, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want to start by thanking our elder brother Munyuko for introducing us. Also thank the local pastor, Pastor Matanga, for giving us this opportunity to stand before you. Like always, I don't intend to take much of your time. I want to give my special songs and song leader in my channel. We want to thank the song special singers for being in the inspiration of today's message. Let's clap hands for them. We can't see. The anger holds, the anger holds. Before we start, we want to sing this song, the anger holds. We support our opening text here from Acts chapter 20, verse 17. As we prepare to get our text from Acts chapter 20, verse 17. Though the sheep is but a Oh, 
Let that be your prayer this morning as we traverse the message this morning. If you can stand together with me for the reading of the word. From the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 17 to about 23. Acts chapter 20, verse 17. And if we are there, we are going to begin. And from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons. Wakati washika kwa hari, akati kwa wari. Imimo no ziomu garere wangu pakati penyu, nguwa zose. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shewed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Now let's take it up to verse 30. Verse 30. We may be seated. Verse 24. Acts 20, verse uh, verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now... Behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Wherefore, I take for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. May God add blessings to the portion of text that we have just read. So I will come back a little bit later on this text and explain the text that we have just read. But for a text this morning, I want to title this message, Being Anchored in the Times of Storms. Being Anchored in the Times of Storms. How many of us are facing storms this morning? I don't have any storm in my life. I think we all agree that we are all facing storms in our lives. Just like the text that we have just read. St. Paul, 
Timotene Paulo who was in the midst of Let me start by saying When ships move, they are safe because they have an anchor. When ships move, they are safe because they have an anchor. Anchoring is vital if the ship is not to sink. Thus, it is very, very important also as believers, as families, those in marriage, as youths, to be anchored. And we need to discover this anchor this morning. As we move on with this message, I want you to reflect on the various kinds of storms you've been through and how you've handled them. The storms that you are in right now and how you are handling them. Part A of this message, I'll be looking at the various storms of life and bring to your attention the purpose of those various storms in your life. Then part B, I'll be looking at what I call an anchor or the various types of angers we have in our lives. First and foremost, we need to all understand that storms come through our lives for different purposes. And these storms don't just come all at once. Storms come through different seasons in our life. Some come whilst we are still very young. Some come whilst we are elderly. Some come at the twilight of our lives. There are different types of storms that we face in life. We have natural storms. For example, hurricanes, tornadoes, tornadoes, blizzards, all these are natural storms. We also have emotional storms. These grind the soul. These pester the heart. The heart is the main culprit of emotional storms. These are very, very difficult to deal with. We also have spiritual storms. These do all happen to us all as believers. And some of these, we create them. And you may ask me, how do we create storms as believers? By disobeying God. We really know what God says. And we disobey willfully. We choose to do things our own way. Let's have a look at examples of storms that we face in our day-to-day lives. Financial straits. Losing homes. Losing jobs. Ill health. Uruwere, separation, kurambana, divorce, broken relationships, and general failures in life. Some of these storms, we don't talk about them. Some of these storms, we face them quietly. Some of these storms, we face them privately. And some of these storms bring perennial illnesses together with them. Some storms are short. Some storms last a while. But the question this morning, Be rest assured, these storms of life will keep coming. There is no time that you're going to say, I'm done with my storms. You may say, why God? This morning we are telling you there is a purpose behind every storm. What is purpose, brother? He can send it. 
tumira. He can allow it. He wants to get our attention. I'm going to invite more and more. deeper storms into your life. Don't refuse to acknowledge what God is up to in your life. God wants to loosen your grip on something. Because he has got something better for your life. As men, we are short-sighted. We are short-sighted. But God sees far afar off. But sometimes you are gripped upon something which you are seeing. For you to leave it, you have to bring a stone to appear as if it's disturbing your manner of life, your conduct, your, the way of working. But it is doing he does not want you to hold on to something. Many times we come here in church. The pastor brings various sermons to us. Some we just hear and quickly forget. Some we are taught, but we don't want to leave those things. It's God's purpose. He sends a storm. He does whatever. He does whatever. If he sees he it fit prematurely, to take a child prematurely, he can do that to get a child. Someone who loses his job. Some have a mental challenge life. Someone who gets a stroke the whole life. He's trying to get your attention. At times he wants to equip us to save him. If we just get a little blessing, we no longer we are not consistent in coming to church. You know the befitting a storm to bring into your life. Storms have different roles they play. Storms can mold you. Storms can destroy you. Let's repeat this. Storms can mold you. And storms can destroy you. Storms at the same time can enhance your love to God. Storms can uh, increase your commitment. Your surrender. Your wisdom. Jesus during his time he learned obedience by the storms that he faced. Some storms leave us more pure. But it all depends with how we respond to these very storms of life. Some say I don't deserve this type of a storm. And they try to force themselves quickly out of those storms. No, they are more coming if you don't realize that it's God's hand behind that. Storms can put you on the shelf. So that God will never use you again. God will continue sending messages, sending messages. If you persist in failing to get it, another storm can come and put you on a shelf for life. Some storms can put you into a life of service. But it all depends with how you respond to the particular God at times sends storms to chastise us. It is God's intention to have all of us here. God doesn't want to lose even a single ship. If he feels he's not getting your attention, he allows storms so that he can get your attention. One thing, God does not play favorites with his children. 
God does not play favoritism. Even if Brother Mariwa, if he just failed to work the way he expected, he will send he his stone. He does not want to lose his own. Amen. Amen. We all know the example of Jonah. Jonah left God. He got into a ship. And immediately a storm arose. When God sends a storm, no matter if you hide even in the belly of the fish, this won't change his mind. You do well by going in the direction that God wants you to go. You may jeopardize your life and the life of others surrounding you. If you rebel like Jonah. The moment Jonah was thrown out of uh, the ship, the storm subsided. And he began to sing, I surrender all. And the deacons at one time would ask you, you are now only attending Friday and Sunday service. And the, the other one is graduates are now coming on Sunday. Sunday. And the other one is, is now coming a month. Someone is now just coming for communion. Someone is now only attending the funerals. Whenever there is a funeral, that's when you'll be able Wait, to attend. the storm is coming. Storms help you to adjust. Storms help you to learn. Storms help you to grow. Storms help you to change for the better. Every storm has a transformative power. I wonder if we can repeat that statement. Every storm has a transformative power. Let's all repeat that statement. Every storm has a transformative power. There is need to work on you if you are a child of God. If you fail to listen to the advice from the elders, wait, the storm is coming. It's going to transform you. When you come out of the storm, be rest assured, you won't be the same person who went in the storm. You become a better person. You begin to see what matters. You know things to prioritize. It might be a storm of uh, illness of a child. For illness even in the house. You have called the deacon's numbers and the pastor's number. And all those are unreachable. Storms help you to see what matters. If we ask each other here this morning, most of us came to the faith through various storms of life. You would say we will never repent. But when a storm of life came, you knew better. We have been equipped to do what God wants us to do. Some storms are meant to demonstrate his power in our lives. He lets us suffer a while. He gives us enough until we are willing to say, Yes, Lord. From then, he uses you as a witness wherever he wants you to go. 
God also sends storms to reveal himself more privately to us. It is man's nature to learn through life's experiences. God knows how to bring in storms. God knows how to subside storms. May waste time trying to negotiate, trying to die, that, but you really know where your issue is. We learn through experiences. And and God knows knows how to bring in those storms and end those storms. Let me read a quotation from the book. Uh, of the prophet absolute preached in 1963 paragraph 102 I'm slightly sliding into part B of my message paragraph 102 and what the Christian needs today in this atomic age and this time of uncertainty, you need something besides just an experience of joining church. You need an anchor. You need an absolute that you know. Because churches will fail. And people will fail. But Christ cannot fail. Let's have a look at part B of my message. What are the reasons for reasons for an anchor? It is human tendency to drift away from God's plan. They know what is expected. But over time they tend to drift away from God's plan. They need an anchor. We live in a time, in an environment, in an atmosphere that is so vile, that is sinful, and there is a natural tendency to want to drift to unrighteousness. Thus, as Christians, we need an anchor. We live in a selfish and godly world. Thus, we need an anchor. What anchors you in times of the storm? The word of God is our anchor. Storms are inevitable. But an anchor is immovable. Can we repeat that statement? It's a very powerful statement. Storms are inevitable. I can't hear you. Storms are inevitable. They are just different in magnitude. They are just different in their magnitude. Even the child which you are getting in your bag may fail to see, but it's facing up with something. But an anchor is immovable. As you walk, you are in the At times, we may not see the anchor. But it is there. In the message, the power of God preached in 1955. Think we have an anchor. Let's have a look at St. Paul's life. We all know St. Paul. At first, how he lived his life. 
And how that light struck him. And how he got a name change. And how he began to be the first missionary to the Gentiles. All through his life, it was a life of storm. But he has some piece of advice that he gives in the book of Acts. I'm not going to go over that. I'll just give you some of the hints that he trips. And then he was out of the will of God. But as his men, they decided to embark on that particular trip. And whilst they were in the midst of the trip, a storm arose. And watch how he advises those who are in the storm. Number one, he says, brace up the ship. Brace up the ship. Because there is a storm that's coming. Why would they need to brace up the ship? This bracing would act as a reinforcement. That's a powerful instruction for us as well this morning. Brace up your mind with the word of God. When you face rough weather, in your life, tell the enemy, I have a future that is filled with hope. Brace your mind with the word of God. Don't let discouragement worry. Take over your mind. Yes, it may be a financial storm. Malachi 3 verse 10 says, God will open up the windows of heaven and you will have a blessing that you won't be able to receive. The next piece of advice that he gives those who are in the midst of a storm, on verse 30 he says, cheer up. Cheer up. When we are in our, in, the, in our storms, control your attitude. Cheer up. Say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes, you could have died. Yes, you can be in serious pain. No matter how bad it is, the message we have as Christians is a message of victory. Not a message of victims, but a message of victors. Number three. Paul says, lighten the Lord with your own hands. Lighten the Lord with your own hands. Says, the trip, they had their own language. So Paul is encouraging them to lighten the Lord with their own hands. So is it as well with us as Christians. When we are in this life's journey, we keep putting in extra stuff that does not really matter. We even take along with us things that destroy us. Things that destroy our health. Things that destroy our relationship with others. When we go through these storms, they remind us of the need to remove the baggages of fear. The baggages of failure. I once seen the disturbance. I want to fail to achieve what I wanted. Lighten the Lord with your own hands. Remove the baggage of bitterness. Remove the baggage of unforgiveness. What kind of a sin which cannot be forgiven? But I will get into the grave with this one. Why would he do this to me? Remove the baggage of bitterness. Remove the baggage of unforgiveness. When going through the storm, unpack. The Apostle Paul says, lay aside every weight that easily besets you. (laughs) 
In the message, Joseph meeting his brethren. Paragraph 74, preached in 1956. But as long as the anchor held, that makes any difference. Whether we go over it, whether we go under it, whether we go around it, or through it, it doesn't matter. The anger holds. But just let the anger hold within the veil to the unseen. Let me give you four anchors before I wind off. The first anger is the anger of purpose. In every storm that you go through as a believer, seek to know the purpose why you are in that particular storm. The purpose does not change whether you know it or you don't know it. The purpose is already planned. Without your input, God doesn't ask for your opinion. As long as you do what he wants you to do, you will sail through the storm. Don't focus on what you're going through, but what the storm wants you to get to. Storms, when the storm arises, we look at that storm this sickness is really unto death. Don't focus on what the storm is like. Focus on what, where the storm wants to get you to. God doesn't use losers. Just drop the anchor of divine purpose. Number two, the second anger that I want you to have. The anger of courage. Whenever we get into various storms of life, we don't have to cry. Though some of the setups are very, very painful, we need to stand high on our legs and say, with Jesus, I can make it. What is courage? Courage is the ability to finish the race even if you are in the last place. Courage is the Courage is refusing to let cancer steal your joy. You are already diagnosed with TB or cancer. You have that condition which you know, which nobody else knows about. Don't let that storm steal your joy. Pray to God. Take your medicine as normal and continue in life's race. Courage is trying again and again and again. Courage is saying, I'm going to keep going on despite the odds that are against me. The third anchor I need oh, to drop here is that of worship. When you get into a storm of light, don't major on how bad the storm is. Yes, it is very, very bad at times. But worship is what Christians do whenever they get into storms. We don't worship because we are not in storms. We don't only worship when we have breakthroughs. Tell the enemy the God that we serve gives and takes away. And his name shall be forever more praised. Keep worshipping him despite all the odds against him. The fourth anchor, Hebrews 6 verse 18. China, verse 18. Hebrews 6 verse 18. Hebrews 6 verse 18. 
Yes, that by two immutable things. That by two immutable things. In which it was impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. What are we saying? Yes, we may have disappointments in life. We may have a situation of barrenness in our lives. We may have setbacks in our lives. But if you have hope, nothing can separate you. An anchor casts away all fear. In the message, an absolute preach in 1963, paragraph 44, as I prepare to wind off musicians. There is no fear to the sailor. I say to you the same this morning. You may be sailing in stormy weather. No matter how hard the ship is being buffeted by the waves, the waves of sickness, the waves of being ungrateful, just meet up with a lot of issues, those are losing job or things are tough like this, uh, failure to be As content. long as that anger is holding, in the top of the mountain yonder, why sure he knows the ship is going to stay up? In conclusion, what are we saying this morning? Storms remind us of who is in control of our lives. Just stand to your neighbor. Just stand to your neighbor. Of who is in control of our lives. So that just remind us of who is in control of our lives. And God allows all storms for a purpose. When you are a believer, nothing happens without God's will and purpose. To equip us to express his love to us, to draw us close to him. As a believer, you need to understand who God is and how he operates. Storms remind us that God is in total control. God bless you. Song, Love Lifted Me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. We're just going to sing two, three songs and then we, we invite our elder to the service. I was sinking deep in sin Far from the peaceful shore Very deeply stained within Sinking to rise no more, but the master is here, but the master of the sea had my despairing cry from the waters, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I, you're now very safe, love lifted. Love lifted, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love. your heart to him, all my heart to him, 
I give ever to him I'll cling in his blessed presence in his blessed presence live his praise ever his praise sing love so mighty and so true the solid rock we are going to stand from today onwards. Though the storms of life may come our way, we are not going to focus on the storms, but we are going to focus on the one who is sending those storms.